All right, guys, we're back for some more what's in the box. So after last time's abysmal packaging, we're here for one that's been packaged really nicely. I assume this is a video game based on what it says here on the front of the box, but this is how it's done. Look at this. What nice packaging. So I assume it's a probably again maybe a PC big box. We won't know till we open it. But if that's PC big box, that's the perfect box for it. Whoever packages this has the right idea anyway. Okay, so we'll get straight into it as quick as possible and I'll open this sucker up right. Right, very exciting. What do we have? So yeah, they've even gone to the effort of putting a bit of packaging in to keep it safe, a bit of bubble wrap. But here we are. Oh yes. Right. Sam and Max hit the road. Freelance police. Yet another LucasArts game here to add to my collection. I suppose you could, we, we could call this LucasArts month or something. I don't know. Um, another LucasArts game though to add to my collection. Absolutely love this one. Thought it was absolutely brilliant when I played it um, in the last few years. For the first time actually and I am a huge LucasArts fan but we never had this as, as kids growing up. This was one of the only ones that we never got. Um, but it's great to finally have it. Great to finally have it. Sam and Max. Now what's funny is uh, actually before I open it I'll just show you. It's great to have this finally because what I can now get rid of are these guys. I don't have one copy of Sam Max. I have two copies of Sam Max. But two copies of Sam and Max isn't enough. I have three copies of Sam and Max from the LucasArts Classic Collection, the purple boxes. Why I have three, I have no idea. I don't know where they came from. <laughs> but I have three copies. So I can now finally get rid of these fellas. And I have my big box here to add to my collection. Oh, this is really nice. Gorgeous artwork. That's, uh, it's Steve Purcell. These characters were created by him. Well, actually, funnily enough, they were created by his brother and he bought the two characters off him. But uh, Steve Purcell's art is just gorgeous. Have a look at that there. Such detail. These two guys started off as uh, comic book characters that uh, Steve Purcell then brought to LucasArts and when he became when he became an artist in there and uh, he wanted to make a game about them and then finally came to oh yeah parental advisory for twisted humor <laughs> very good okay so let's get into it let's open it up lovely cover oh some more packing here brilliant this guy our girl knows exactly what they're doing. So this version here isn't actually the CD-ROM version, it's the diskette version. So there's actually not uh, not just one or two discs, there is a whole lot of discs. Wow, one, two, three, oh, lovely, I'll have to use a bit of glue on that. Four, five, and six. That's six high-density floppy discs from back in the day. Now, the CD-ROM version, I believe, has voice acting. I'm not 100% sure that the diskette version has that. I don't know if this is the talkie version. But what I may do is I may hang on to one of my three copies of the CD-ROM version and actually add it into the, the big box. That would be nice, I think. Cool. So what else has come in this? A diskette trade-in offer, yeah, back in the... Back in the 90s and the 80s, uh, if you didn't have five and a quarter inch um, uh, floppy drive, you could swap the discs out for for 
for the smaller size, uh, which was really cool. A lot of companies were doing that for uh, for free, basically, for the price of postage, I believe. So that's, that's really cool. Um, obviously, this person had that sized floppy drive at the time. I'm really going to have to glue that on because that's not nice. That's not safe. All right, so I'll put this down here. That's cool. Oh, yes. I'm happy about this. This is my first copy of The Adventurer. I've never had a copy of The Adventurer thus far in my collection of LucasArts games. Um, so this is awesome. This is kind of uh, what this is, is it's a product guide basically for LucasArts and what they did was they put it out and it's it's in you know lovely color and it was kind of a news um, a news magazine. It also had stuff like hints for 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 the games and and other things like that which is is really cool at the time so it's awesome to finally have a copy of this the dig another point and click adventure these are obviously like beta shots or something of an earlier version of the game i've never seen seen a i've played the dig and i've never seen them look i don't remember that i don't remember the game looking like that maybe i'm completely wrong but uh, yeah, so they would have also, in the adventure, um, sold stuff that was coming out in the future and, and stuff like that. What's this here? Sam and Max hit the road. The trill packed and completely unrelated official board game. <laughs> Brilliant. So this is what I was I was talking about in the, la in the last episode. I was talking about how the adventure was also kind of a comic um, book for Sam and Max to kind of be fleshed out as LucasArts characters before they got their own game and obviously this is an example of one of the things that they were involved in uh, official board game this might be a bit of fun emos <laughs> emos the vermin of the world oh no vermin world emos so emos are vermin according to this I do not. I do not agree with that statement. Uh, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And then yeah. So it also uh, it also had uh, pieces on uh, Lucas Arts employees. So here we've got Peter Chan. He's a he was a lead artist in uh, Lucas Film for years and Lucas Arts. And some of his artwork is is amazing. The backgrounds in Monkey Island Two, for example, he did a lot of those with. Um, with Steve Purcell, so it's cool that they had that kind of stuff in this magazine. And it just kind of gave the customer a kind of view into the company and how they worked and stuff like that. And obviously, it acted as a product guide as well. But I'm really happy now to have at least one copy of The Adventurer in my possession. It's fantastic, it's cool. Of course, I actually don't believe that the adventurer made it over to mainland Europe, where I'm based in Ireland, but uh, definitely an American thing, considering the dollar signs, but yeah, it's a shame because LucasArts are actually hugely popular over here in Europe, particularly their point and click games. Uh, LucasArts struggled to uh, gain market dominance against Sierra Online at the time because Sierra had such a great marketing team behind their games. So what actually ended up happening is LucasArts became very big over here in mainland Europe, which is fantastic. Right, moving on anyway. Sam and Max hit the road. IBM reference card. So this is a type of a user, a quick, a quick user manual guide, getting started, keyboard and cursor controls. Cool, so what else do we have here? Is your computer connected? Some early internet connection guides here and trying to sell Prodigy service. Never heard of that, that's new to me. The Prodigy service, I'll have to look that up. Need a modem? Yeah, we did need a modem and we didn't get one for very, very many years. So cool, this is uh, the same as last time in the last episode with uh, Indiana Jones. This is how you get your, oh no, this is completely different reading it. 
from LucasArts, send in this card and enter our drawing. Enter our drawing for Freak LucasArts Prize. What? Do you have to draw something for LucasArts and send it to them back in the day? That's kind of bad English, isn't it? Send in this card and enter our drawing for a free LucasArts prize. Is it a drawing competition or enter our drawing? A drawing that they made and you have to find somewhere? <laughs> Not quite sure what that is. I thought it was uh, the adventurer um, sign up letter. Anyway, continuing on again. What's this? Star Wars Rebel Assault. One eight hundred Star Wars. Just a pre-order card by the looks of it. Cool. Okay. I'll pre-order Rebel Assault so <laughs> in the past. Ah yes, this is one of it. Another cool thing that was added to the Salmon Max um, box, big box. So this is a. Crime Stoppers coloring book. So I'm I'm sure this doubles up as both the manual and it actually is a coloring book, as obviously these games were aimed at children. But um, as as an adult, I certainly still love them. But I believe this actually doubles up as a coloring book as well. Hopefully, it's not colored on because that would just devalue the whole thing. And maybe I want to color it in the future. But yeah, so this this acts as a as a manual plus coloring book. The art is just sprite art is fantastic of Sam and Max. They're just gorgeous. Steve Purcell was definitely onto something. It's such a funny game, such a strange game. Oh, here at the unof the the official board game in black and white. So I now have it in color and black and white. That's great. So it's just a lot of fun, this game. Very, very strange. I'd love to get some copies of the actual comic that was released as well. The, the comic books of Sam and Max Freelance Police. They'd be good fun to, uh, to check out. I must see if I can find any of them to add to the collection. Now, I believe there is a hint book as well, which I unfortunately don't have. But it's quite similar looking to this. Um, if I can pick one up. I definitely will to add to the collection. It's just nice to have these things, but I'm really, really happy with that. Again, like, you know, big boxes back in the day, they just came chock full of stuff. I can barely fit it all into frame here. I'll try my best for you, but just chock full of things and tidbits and stuff to look at and just really, really cool, really great. And that stuff doesn't happen anymore. And it's just such a shame. And I must say, I absolutely love the art style in this game. It's so vibrant. It's like playing a Saturday morning cartoon, really, to be honest. It's just gorgeous. Very, very weird story to this game, actually. Bigfoot goes missing and Sam and Max go on a... They go on a tour of North American, like, sites. Like Mount Rushmore there and they go to... I'm sure they go to the... A potato farm or something like that where the potatoes look like faces or maybe it's a pumpkin farm or tomato farm I can't really remember it's been a few years since I've played the game but yeah they go on a North American trip of all these sites these famous sites of, uh, of, Amer of America very very strange game the ending is very odd as well with the Bigfoots hiding, they need trees or something like that. It's very hard to very hard to explain, but if you play it, it's definitely got a twisted sense of humor and it's a bit of fun. Um, yeah, and Bumpusville. I remember there's a place called Bumpusville in it as well because there's a character. Um, he's a singer. He's kind of this Elvis-like singer, really, really small guy, and he's very annoying, but it's a whole lot of fun. There's a bit of dust on the front cover yeah but man that's how you package a game that's if you're selling a game put it in a box like that this guy or girl had the right idea 
um, sending this one to me. It just, that's the way it's supposed to be done. Really, really nice packaging. To keep the box safe, you know, on the journey over. We don't want any of this beautiful art getting ruined or, you know, any scuffs on the box. Like, we want to keep these things safe for, you know, the future generations. <laughs> Man. Oh, I'm nearly there. I nearly have all of the uh, point and click adventure games from LucasArts. I'm so excited. I can't wait to have it finished. So, that's been What's in the Box this time around. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe and, you know, these will happen hopefully a bit more as time goes on. Um, Sam and Max finally have it in the collection. And I can finally get rid of these three fellas. <laughs> right. See you around, guys.